In this video, we are going to work on something known as the espresso idling resource. Or actually, sorry, in other words, I'm going to introduce something known as the espresso idling resource. And what the espresso idling resource is used for is it's used for uh, facilitating testing when things, uh, when the tests involve background threads on Android. So right now, you know, just kind of in general, Espresso has the ability to kind of look forward in your code, in your uh, code that's being tested, and figure out generally what's going on. But it does run into problems when you have things that are going to be happening on background threads. So if you're doing like a network request that requires obviously a background thread, if you're doing a cache request, whatever it is, some kind of big computational thing that requires time, um, it has issues with that. So uh, the Espresso idling resource is the solution to that problem. It's what we have to use to facilitate those, those long running tasks, those background tasks, basically anything that takes time, we have to use this. So what I'm gonna be showing you is a continuation from the previous video that we worked on. I'll, tr I'll throw up the thumbnail of that video here on the screen um, because I haven't published it on YouTube or on my website yet. So um, it'll be a continuation from that video and we're going to be um, basically just adding like a fake kind of network delay into the previous request where we get the data. And then we're gonna use the Espresso. Well, first I'll show you that the test fails whenever you add like a fake delay. And then we are going to introduce the Espresso idling resource. And I'll show you that then after that, it's smooth sailing and the tests all run really just exactly how they're supposed to. So if, if you're watching this video and you don't know uh, what this course is, the course that I just mentioned, this video is part of a full length free course on my website on UI testing for beginners. You can just go to codingfish.com, go to courses up here and select UI testing for beginners. And you can watch this completely free all you gotta do is register on my website and you, it tracks your progress you can uh, follow along with all the videos and i do recommend watching in in that order it, they kind of all fit together nicely that way so this video as i said is a continuation it's a continuation from the previous video again i'll throw the thumbnail up here uh, where we have just kind of a basic application with the recycler view there's some movies here they got you know image title um, a little bit of information about the star actors in that in that uh, particular movie. If I click one, I'm taken to a detail, fragments, title, image, directors, star actors, the description. If I click on directors, there's a list of directors. If I click on star actors, there's a list of star actors. And they're all different, obviously. And you just saw that uh, that little loading animation there. Um, you're probably wondering what that is. If you, Again, if you're watching this course, this video for the first time, you haven't watched the rest of the course, you know that um, you don't know that the animations on this testing device are actually disabled. So this is what the progress bar looks like because I've disabled the, uh, the, pro the um, animations. All right, so um, let's take a look at the code and we'll see, and I'm gonna add, or I'm gonna show you what I've altered from the previous video. So those of you who are still watching right now, I'm assuming that you've watched the previous one. I've said it multiple times now, this is a continuation. So you're gonna need to uh, get the code from the previous video to be able to, to watch this one. So let's, um, let's take a look at the code and see how this has changed from the previous video, like I said. So if we go into movie list fragment and we scroll down here, we have this get data function where it uses a this uh, interface to tell the UI to show a loading animation. It creates a job using a coroutine, so it launches it on a background thread, and then it adds this kind of fake network delay. So this fake network delay is just one second of delay. If you go into data, go into fake movie data, you can see up here that that fake network delay is just one second. So it's just delaying the getting, the retrieving of, of that data one second, and then it's going to um, continue on with getting the data. So it says, once the job is complete, which it will be complete after one second, so job invoke on completion, then we want to tell the, the interface to tell the UI to stop showing the loading animation, and then we actually just submit the data to the recycler view. So it's just pretending to get, you know, take one second to get the information from the network, and then it's publishing it to the recycler view. So if I was to run the test that we created on the, in the previous video, the one before this one, uh, so let's actually go into the Android test directory here and go into uh, movie list fragment test. So this is the test class that we built in the previous video. If I was to run these now, since that network delay is there, these tests will all fail because, or they should all fail um, unless there's one that doesn't require getting the data. But um, let's just run this and I'll, I'll let you take a look here and see if, uh, see if they pass. So fail, 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 
and they should, this one might, might, nope, that fails too. They should all fail. All right, so they all fail. And that's because the only thing different, again, from the previous video compared to this video is I've added that fake, this uh, kind of fake network delay. So you can see that we have a problem. There's, there's obviously something that um, this delay does that makes all of our tests fail. And so now we can introduce the espresso idling resource and we can we can solve this problem. All right, so first things first, we need to add some dependencies. So I'm actually gonna close everything here and open up the build.gradle app file. And if you scroll down, you'll see that I've already added a new dependency. This is the Android X test espresso, espresso idling resource dependency. And one thing you should notice here is that I'm, I'm calling, I'm using implementation and I'm not calling Android test implementation. So this might confuse some of you because we're writing UI tests. Why wouldn't we add this dependency in the UI testing, um, I guess, uh, namespace for these dependencies? And that's because the Espresso Idling resource, it's actually going to be a class that we create and we have to add it to our production code. So I'll talk more about that later because you're probably a little confused. But just for now, add this dependency. Uh, looks like there's actually a newer version available, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to use 3.1.0. I know that works and um, well uh, if you're just adding this obviously you have to click sync in the build.gradle file and now let's let's move forward so actually before we write any code let me actually pull up the documentation for the uh, espresso idling resource so I actually I do recommend taking a look at this 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 single page here so uh, developer android.com training testing espresso idling resource you don't need to go to this this hashtag you can just go to this page um, I recommend reading this because there's a lot of really good information here. It tells you, you know, what the idling resource is for, the common use cases, uh, some examples, so counting idling resource, URI idling resource, so on, so on, uh, how to create your own idling resource, um, lots, lots of really good stuff here. So in general, though, there's a lot of ways to do this, but the, the punchline is, you need to use an idling resource if there's any sort of a timed delay. And there's always time delays in Android. Anytime you do background work, there's a potential time delay there. It could be anything from setting an image with Glide. Maybe a high resolution image takes a long time to set. Maybe you're submitting a list of data to your recycler view, but it, it's a big list. It might take some time. Um, doing network requests, obviously, doing cache requests, long, long network background or long. Um, like computational heavy tasks. Again, everything takes time. So this is gonna, it's a very important tool in your testing tool belt. You need to know about this. So if you look at the documentation here, it says if you read this whole page, basically it recommends, and, you, and also you read the Google samples and everything like I have, it recommends using this counting idling resource. So what this counting, counting idling resource thing does is it maintains a counter of the active tasks. So basically every time there's an active task that takes some time delay, this counting res resource will increment, and then as soon as that task is done, it de-increments. So, um, so the tests will wait for when there is nothing in the there's nothing in the count. So, if there's a task running, it count goes up. Task is done, count goes to zero. Then the UI test will continue. So that's how it works. It basically looks and says, "Is there anything that's pending?" Yes, then I'll wait. If there isn't, then the test will continue. All right. So now let's build this class that we can use in our code. So um, the way this works is a little strange because you actually have to put it in your production code, or at least they recommend putting it in your production code. So I'm gonna create a class here that we are gonna use literally in our production code that's gonna increment a counter when, a, when a, any kind of a background task is about to begin and then de-increment it when the task is done. And again, I'm gonna talk more about this because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, whoa, 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 I don't wanna put any kind of a testing thing in my production code, that's, not, that's gonna look ugly. Um, but don't worry, I'm gonna talk more about that and, and uh, the best way to go about that because I've, I've um, thought about this a lot myself and I read a couple articles on it and there's a bunch of different things you can do but I'll tell you what my recommended method is. All right, so this is gonna be called the uh, Espresso Idling Resource class. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So this is going to be a singleton object. So I'm gonna go object, Espresso Idling Resource and open this up and I give, give myself some more room here so we can scroll down later. Uh, it's gonna have a constant, so private constant value, I'll call it resource, and this will just be global. Uh, there's no, you can name this any, whatever you want. Uh, it's just naming for the counter that keeps track of your tasks, whatever you wanna call this. I just call it global because that's what they call it in the Google sample. Now I'm gonna write at JVM field, so this is a static field, counting idling resource, 
is what it will be called and then I'll be equal to a counting idling resource and then I pass that that resource global constant that I created up there so you have to give it a name and the name is global again you can give it whatever name you want so now it's going to have two functions one is going to be increment so I just want to go counting idling resource dot increment and then the second one will be deincrement so function decrement open this up and then I want to do if this not counting idling resource dot is idle now then i want to do counting idling resource dot d increment so if it's not already idle if the counter is not already at zero then d increment it that's all this is going to do it's very simple um, just to keep track of the tasks so now let's uh let's use this thing so let's go into movie list fragment and we want to go into here into the get data function and i want to do espresso idling resource it's a singleton so i can just access its meth its uh functions and methods i want to go increment because now i'm telling it something is in use here and then down below once i've already submitted the list of data to the recycler view i want to do espresso idling resource dot d increment so this is this is the game this is what you have to do um, i know it's kind of strange to be putting this this kind of stuff in your production code but this is what they recommend doing if you read the google samples if you read the medium articles written by the developers at google if you read the documentation they all recommend um, there are ways to go around this but they all recommend at the end of the day the best way is just to put this in your production code so um it you're probably wondering yeah like you're saying this you're probably thinking that this is ugly you don't want to do this the other thing you can do is you can create a debug build and a release build and you can put only um only the uh the espresso idling resource stuff into your debug build not into your release build that would keep it out of your production code mostly um, and that's what i recommend doing i'm not going to show you how to do that in this video um i'm going to show you how to do that though Probably not in, in the next video. In the next video, I want to show you kind of a weird bug, a weird espresso bug. And then in the video after that, I'll show you how to create a debug build and a release build so that you can only add this stuff to the release or the uh, debug version. So when you actually release the app, that code won't exist because you don't want to put code there that doesn't do anything because that's what it would do. So now that we have this in here, um, I'm actually going to add it somewhere else too. So right here we have a delay, and so obviously we have to use our espresso idling resource. Well, somewhere else we could add it is inside of our movies list adapter. So here I'm using the diff callback, the uh, diff util for the recycle view. I have a video on this, by the way, um, how to use this. It's the, the best practice way to use recycle views these days. So it, um, so what I want to do here is when I'm submitting this list of data to the recycle view. I want to use the espresso idling resource because potentially I could be, if I was submitting like a huge list of data, this could take time. It might, because the, the way that the async list differ works is it takes the list of data it, and t throws it to a background thread and it compu does computations to determine what the best way to submit that new list or integrate those new items into the current list. So there's, there's a background, there's background work being done here and it potentially could take time. So using the espresso idling resource is a good idea. So I want to do espresso idling resource dot increment. And as you can see here, I kind of gave away the, what I was doing. I forgot to remove this from the source code, but I'm creating a runnable callback. So it's called data commit callback equals a new runnable and that what this is this callback gets called when the submit list function is done what it's doing so you can see here if i hover over here uh, it takes a new list but it also takes a runnable commit callback so once that new data has been committed to the recycler view list this callback will run so you can pass it as a second parameter right here so once the, all of everything's done that's what i'm going to do i'm going to de-increment de the espresso idling resource um, some of you, most of you probably didn't know that you could do this with uh, the diff util, so you probably learned uh, something as a bonus here. So just creating a runnable using a lambda, and then whenever that list is done being added to the recycle view, what is inside this runnable will be executed. So we want to de-increment our counter. So now, how do we use this inside of our tests? We've got a way to uh, increment the counter, de-increment the counter. Now let's take a look at the test. So let's go into movie list fragment test, and uh, I'll show you how to set up the espresso idling resource. So first we need, an, we need a before and an after block. So I'm gonna write at before, and this function will be called, I'll just call it register idling resource. So register idling resource. And what I'm gonna do is go idling registry dot get instance dot register and then i want to specify the class so we're using a singleton so i can use espresso idling resource and then just reference that counting idling resource now i need an after block so at after fun 
Uh, this will be called uh, unregister, unregister idling resource. And then same kind of thing, idling resource dot get instance dot unregister this time and then just reference that singleton object. So that is it. That's all you need to do. I, I all you need to do is, you know, create the custom. I mean, I guess you could call this a custom class, but really we're just using the standard counting idling resource. Create two functions, increment and deincrement, uh, and then put it into your production code. In our case, we just have two places. We have it for getting the data and then also for when we're submitting a new list of data to, to the uh, recycler view. And then anytime, any tests, so if you have a test class where inside of the test there's functions that have situations that have delays, all you got to do is add the before register the idling resource after unregister the idling resource. So the idling resource will be registered before each test function and then unregistered after each test function. So now let's uh, let's run our tests again. So I'm gonna press Shift F10, or you could right click, go to run, whatever way you want. Let's take a look here and see if our tests pass this time. Uh, I hope I didn't forget anything. It's always nice when they pass the first time. Green check mark number one, that's probably, uh, probably means they're all gonna pass. There's green check mark number two and green check mark number three and should be green check mark number four and last one green check mark there we go so all the tests pass we are good to go that is how you incorporate a espresso idling resource in your your um your tests that require delays all right so uh, in the next video as i said i'm going to show you kind of a weird espresso bug that i encountered and i, I actually want to see what you think because i legitimately have no idea what's going on very strange. Um, so I just kind of want to show you guys, make you guys aware of it because I wasted a lot of time on this bug. I, I, I'm assuming it's a bug and I'm not doing something wrong, um, but I wasted a good, you know, four or five hours probably just kind of mapping out what this bug is and how to work around it. Um, so I want to share that with you. And then in the video after that one, I'm going to show you how to create the debug and release builds so that you can only have, so that you don't have any useless code in your production, in your production uh, project. So like this will only be present in the debug build um, as opposed to the release build. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you got any questions, if you think that I should be, or if you want to see anything specific tested, um, let me know below. I'm more than happy to do that if enough people recommend it or want to see it. And again, don't forget that this course is part of a full length course on my website. It's completely free. Just go to codingwithmitch.com, go to courses, and you can find that course. Registration takes 30 seconds. Again, it's free. So that's going to be it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.